tell you what. Let's have, we're going to have a little scene. Maybe we want to have a little, I'm just going to scrape out a basic shape here. I'm going to have a little barn back here. It's just a nice place to have a little barn. Scrape out a basic shape with a knife. Just so you have an idea where you're going. But more important, it removes that loose excess paint. I'll go right into that brown color I made from the, brown was made from the sap green. And a lizard and crimson. See, think about the basic shape of the old barn. Got to have a place for the cow to go at night. He may get scared out here. Might be an old hoot owl out here that makes noises. Scared. Oh, shoot, when I was a kid, I used to camp out in the, late at night and the old owl would make a big old noise. I was ready to call my mother and go home. But as I got older, I had the opportunity to learn what, what those creatures were and why those noises were made. I tell you what, before the series is over, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you a big old owl. I like owls. I'm gonna show you a great horned owl that I had the pleasure of meeting. I think we have some video with him on there. I'm just gonna get him up here for you. Take a little bright red, a little of that brown we made, a little bit of white into it. Don't overmix it. See that color? It's not overmixed. Now when we cut our little roll of paint off, all those little designs are still in the paint. Now we can go up here, doop, doop, and just begin putting some color in. I'm gonna make that a little bit brighter, a little more white into it so it shows up for you. That's better. Now I'm just gonna let the knife sort of bounce. I don't want this just to be solid. I like old buildings in my paintings, but it's up to you. If you want them to look newer, be a little more careful with them. I like it to look like about half of it's blowed away and it's about to fall down. The old farmer that lived out here, he didn't, he didn't take too good a care of it. He, he had some bad days. There. See there? Now over here, almost nothing. Almost nothing. Tell you what, we'll get a little more of that brown. This farmer is like me, he needs more room. Let's give him a shed out here. There, give him a little shed. Put some sides on it. Back to our little roof color. See how easy it is? Wished it was that easy to actually build a shed. I, I used to be a carpenter years ago. My father was a carpenter and he, and he taught me that trade. And I tell you what, it isn't that easy to make a shed on, on a barn. Now then, we can come right in here and just do a barnectomy. Sort of figure out where we think everything should live. Work on our perspective. See there. Now we need a door. We're gonna have old cow living in there. We need a door. There it is. Now bossy can get in and go out. We can take and make just the indication of a few old boards that live right along here. There, just by touching. Come across a little bit of light color on the knife. We sort of outline that door a little bit so it stands out and you can see it better. But that's a pretty good looking old raggedy barn out there. Now, we're not too worried about the bottom because we'll come back with our old two inch brush that we made the grassy areas with and just sort of fill them in. There, like that. And when you're painting, make up little stories. Think about the old cow that lives in here or the chickens or the pig or whatever lives in this old barn. I stay in so much trouble at home, I probably have to live in there. There. Now then, tell you what, we need a, we need a little path. We'll take a little of that brown and white. Let's just put a little path in here. There little path so so there's a way to get in and out. Just a little path. Comes right out. Little highlight on it. Not much. Not much. I'm gonna keep it pretty dark. Now maybe in our world shoot, if we got a cow here, we need to con contain her somehow. There. We'll put a little fence right up here. Maybe the fence goes right about there. Maybe it comes right up here. I don't know. Okay, if our light's coming from this direction and the old barn indicates it is, we'll highlight a little bit on that side defense. See there, just a little highlight. 
I can take just the heel or the back of the knife and just cut right through there, either direction, and make the indication of some wire on there. It'll scratch through and just let a little canvas show. We'll put three strands of wire on our fence. We got a big cow in here, we don't want her getting out. Sometimes it's neat to take a little bit of, I use a little bright red, put just a little top on those little devils. Because normally when you cut fence post, when you cut the tree down to make a fence post, you paint the ends of it to keep it from deteriorating. There, right. Now then, let's take, let's start with midnight black. Just plain old midnight black. Pull it out very flat, take the knife, cut across, and get a little roll of paint. It should live right on the edge of the blade. Come right up in here. Maybe we'll have a big mountain today, and, and it lives right there. And let's just put the top of the mountain in. There it is, something about like so. And I'll take a little titanium white, pull it out the same way, and I wanna come back in here and just put the indication of a little highlight on here. Just titanium white and no pressure. Barely, barely touching it. Just let it graze that. And I'll mix up a little bit of, oh, we'll use some, we'll use a little phthalo blue and white. What the heck, that's a nice color. This is gonna be a very bright little painting. Once again, our little roll of paint. See, when you do that, pull that flat and just sort of cut across. Small roll of paint. And we'll come back in here, and we'll put a few little indications of some shadows. I don't want a lot in here. It's too far away. But just enough to create that illusion. Boy, we got a floating mountain up there now. Now we can take, I want to put a, a lot of snow right in here. So we'll take just titanium white and come right across. Soup. Got to make those little noises, though. Just come right across. Be brave. Be brave, right up here in the sky. Just drop this in. And you can leave little of these areas showing through. Let the paint break. Allow some of those little areas to show through. Here I've used a little of that shadow color, a little blue and white, so it'll look like a little shadow right along that edge. And back to my black, and we begin putting in something to hold this up. We'll put in there, like that. And tell you what, maybe, maybe, yep, right there. There we go. Just put in all kinds of little things. Let them fade right down into nothing, basically. And I'll tell you what this do. Yeah, right in here. We'll have all kinds of little things that just live there. Because we have some black gesso here. We know there's going to be a tree. So I'm not too worried about putting a lot of stuff in there. We're just gonna have some little stones that live in there. Something maybe like that, like that. Then over in here, the least little touch of the titanium white. So we can separate all these little stones and rocks and all these beautiful little things that are happening up here in this mountain. No pressure, no pressure. Let it float, just let it float. Little touch of the thalo blue and white. Give us a little shadow indication. And I really don't want a lot. I want to keep this quite dark. Just a little here and there. Something like that. That's a rough looking mountain already. Then in here, maybe this comes right on down. We don't know. Wherever, wherever. Take a little bit of my shadow color, the blue and white again and very gently put a little touch of it just coming down the side of this mountain like that. A little touch right up in there. Now, let's take a nice clean and very dry, be sure it's very dry, two inch brush and I want to create the illusion of mist right down at the base of this like that. So we'll just tap. Be sure to follow the angles. Follow those angles. And then very lightly, very lightly lift it upward. Lift it upward. I want a little misty area down here at the base. And this is the way we create that illusion. That's the way. There, a little bit over in here. Not too much here because we're gonna have trees here. We don't really care. Doesn't make much difference over on this side. 
mountain, maybe. Hmm. We're having so much fun making mountains. And I've got several letters people want to know how to do mountains that have a lot of rocks at them. So this is a, a nice way. Maybe there's another rock is right there. Just wherever you want to put in some black. And we'll come back with a little touch of highlight color. No pressure. I know you get tired of hearing that. But probably that's the biggest problem that most people have when they're trying to make mountains is they apply too much pressure and then it just mushes together, as Steve says, my son, and you become a mud mixer. So try to try to just practice letting it float across there with no pressure whatsoever. No pressure. Now we can bring this area right on up and just sort of let it go right in there like that. Think about angles, let it play, let it play. There it goes. And we'll just let it come up in here somewhere. We don't care where it goes. And all this I'm gonna just mist right into nothing down here. So we can just go wherever you want it. A little bit showing over here maybe. Our time today into doing a fantastic mountain. I get so many letters from people and mountains are just about the favorite thing going right now. So let's try that. Let's try that. We'll take a little phthalo blue, a little lizard and crimson, and mix it together. And this is very dark. It'll look black on the palette. So take a little bit of white and then check it out and see if it's what you want. Maybe we'll add a little bit more crimson to that. I want a lavender color, but I want it to the blue side. Pull it out flat. Cut off our little roll of paint. Lives right out on the edge of the knife. Let's go up in here. Now you have to make your first major decision. Where does where does your mountain live? Let's come right up in here. Maybe our mountain starts right here. And all you do is take the knife and firmly, you can probably hear how firm is it, firmly push in a basic shape. And the only thing we're interested in at this point is just the top up here. We could care less what's happening with the bottom. Don't worry about it at all. Don't worry about it at all. I said big mountain. I wasn't kidding, was I? This is. This is going to be a big mountain. Maybe it'll come all the way over here. Now we're scraping off all the excess paint. There. And scrape it hard. This old canvas is tough. You're, you're not going to hurt it. Don't worry about hurting it. Just really get in there and scrape it. Now we take a clean, dry, be sure it's dry, two inch brush, and I want to pull that out. That'll do two things. First of all, it'll make the mountain lighter at the base than it is at the top, which is exactly what we're looking for. Secondly, it removes excess paint. It makes the next layers much, much easier to apply. Much easier. You have a lot of loose paint on there, then it's difficult to make the next layer stick on top of that. There we go. We'll just let it just blend right off into nothing over here. There we go. Now one thing that's very nice when you do your painting this little bit of pink that's left down here at the bottom, if everything works just right, that'll look like mist. So try to save that. It can be your very good friend. There we go. Maybe, it sort of looks like a natural place to, maybe the light's coming from the left side today. So let's just take a little titanium white. Let's make a mountain that's very easy to make. We'll take a little white with a little, little touch of blue in it, but very little, just enough to Cool it down a little. Maybe even a little bit of black into it also. There, it makes a nice bluish gray color. Ooh, that's nice. And don't over mix it, leave it sort of marble. And I've got the small knife, thought I'd use it today. But once again, our little roll of paint. And let's go up in here and begin making some decisions. Think about, think about where the light's coming through here and just zinging and playing and having a good time. And maybe it comes right along in here. There. Just begin applying all your little basic shapes. Just think if you were a sunbeam and you were zinging down the valley down through here, where would you hit? There. See, this is a very simple way of making some nice mountains. There we go. This little knife, I like it because it sort of gets into all the little places here and you can make, you can make all these little doers. Just all kinds of little things. We 
wherever you want them. Once again, just think about where light would strike and lay it in. But there's not a lot of paint here. Not a lot of paint. There we go. See, and if you don't like one, you just rub it and it goes away. There. And down at the bottom here, I want it to just disappear. So here I'm applying quite a bit of pressure up on the top. No pressure, but as you work down, I want it to disappear. So there I'm adding more and more pressure. So just sort of experiment a little and, and see what works well for you. Think about where these little, all these little shapes and highlights would live. There, and you can put as many or as few as you want on your mountain. There we are. In Alaska, there's a lot of mountains that look like this. And they're so beautiful. As I mentioned earlier, I'm sure God was having a good day when he made Alaska. There, maybe, maybe there's a little, little bump there. You can do that just by taking the basic shape of the knife and putting it in. Let it just sort of disappear back here. And then once again, more pressure down here. And you begin to see how that little pink area is showing through. And that's what's going to Create that illusion of mist down at the base. You could do this with a large knife if you wanted to. It works just as well. I just sort of like this little one for things like this where you want a lot of detail and you want to create shapes. You can paint entire paintings with these knives. There. Okay, see, and just sort of think about it. Think about it, let it go. There. More and more pressure down here. Mm. But see, it's it's really very simple. It's a it's a matter of angles when you're working on these mountains. That's really all it is. It's just a matter of angles. Maybe there's look at that. See, maybe there's a little thing right there. Wherever you think they should live, that's exactly exactly where they should live. Over in here, a few more little little doors in there. Just wherever, wherever. And you can put all kinds of little details. It's up to you, up to you. Painting is as individual as painters are. There's as many different ways to paint the same scene as there are painters. As many different ideas. It's really an individual thing. See, you can add a little dark here and there, not a great deal, just enough to, just enough to give some little indications of some shadows in those deep areas. Don't want a lot in there, though. Okay, maybe right in here. Just rub it a little, and you can just blend it together, just using the edge of the knife. Now, if you've never painted mountains before, this is one of the easiest ways that I've ever came up with to make, to make very effective mountains very easy. Let a little bit of that light color just pull back here and there. And here I'm using the small edge of the knife. Use both edges. That's why, that's why it has two edges on it. And that way you can create all kinds of effects. And that's basically all I'm looking for. I want that mountain to be far away and, and distant. Let's have another one right here. Shoot, that works so nice. Or let me show you something here. You could take the brush. If you wanted to create more mist in this area, you could take a brush and tap it and then gently lift it. But always follow those angles that you've created. There. Okay, now then, same color. Come right over on this side over here. Let's have us a nice mountain. It lives right there. Okay, let it come right on down, wherever, wherever, maybe it comes down here, maybe bloop, there's a big drop off right there, like so, See, just sort of let your imagination go, mountains grow in every kind of shape, just whatever, whatever happens that day, let it happen, there, maybe it comes right on down, in there somewhere. 
if you want this mountain to look closer, it needs to be darker. So I'm gonna, gonna put a little more paint on this one than I did that one back there. So I want it to be darker, stronger. There we go. Maybe it'll go like that. And there, all we're trying to do is just put color on the canvas. You could, you could put this on with your shoe. It doesn't matter. Just, just apply the color. Now we'll take this brush and begin blending it out. Grab it and blend it. There. Think about the, the angle, though, that you want it to flow, how you want it to flow. And just by using brush strokes, you can create all kinds of little things happening in here. There we go. But by using this angle, it gives you that impression that the mountain the lay of this land on this mountain flows in that direction. That's exactly what we're looking for today. I want those mountains to look like they just flow right down the side there. Okay. Good. Very gently, very gently. Just bring it all together. Okay, shoot, let's wash the brush. And we wash our brush with odorless thinner. Shake it off. <laughs> and just beat the devil out of it. Tell you what, let's do. Maybe take a little of that titanium white that I had here. Maybe right in here. Let's just lay a little white. That has the least, least little touch of the thalo blue in it. Maybe there's a little, maybe there's a little snow or a glacier or something that lives in there. But I don't want it to be pure white all over. I want it to be like shadows. I don't want it to be too bright. Put this in first. Then we can add a few highlights here and there if we want them. There we go. And then we could take a little bit of the pure white and just highlight this. Let it just bounce. Very gentle. Barely caressing the canvas. Allow the paint to break. It'll create all those little things in there. There. And just let it follow those angles. Like so. Okay, we can take our large brush in and very gently, very gently, just blend it together. But this is two hairs and some air. And I think I'm going to put a bunch of trees in there, so most of that's not going to show. So don't spend a lot of time worrying about it. Let's take, let's build us a tree. We'll take some black, some Prussian blue, very dark, a little Van Dyke brown, a little bit of the sap green. Shoot, you can throw in a little crimson too if you want. Mainly a good dark color, good dark color. Okay, let me wipe off the old knife here. All right, let's make, let's make some evergreens with we use a fan brush day. There, for as long as that painting lasts, it's just, it's a second of time captured and stuck on canvas. Maybe you want to look at it that way. Let's do a building, heck with all this. I'm going to come right, what I find it's easiest if you take your knife and scrape out a basic shape. Let's do an old barn today, what the heck. Maybe we'll do a big, big building. As I say, I'm getting quite a few letters people want see how to do a big building, so we'll do an old barn. But see, you already you begin to make out the basic shapes. There. Now, come down like that. See, can you see what I'm scraping out here? That does two things. It allows you, it allows you to lay your building out without being committed, and it, but it also removes that excess paint that's underneath, so the next layer sticks easier. Maybe there's some, maybe, yeah, maybe it comes out like that. Comes down. Look at that. Over here, maybe it comes out right in here and down. However, you're still not committed. All you've done here is just lay out a basic shape. Now I'm going to take the knife, pull out some Van Dyke Brown, cut off a roll of paint. See that little roll of paint right on the edge there? Good. Now then, let's begin laying in our shapes. 
this is a time to start being a little more careful. Before, it didn't matter. But now you want to start making big decisions. Maybe this old barn's a little sway back. Let's do an old barn. Years and years it's set here. The old timbers in the middle are getting weak. And it's like me, it's tired. It's ready for rest. There, now we can just begin blocking this in. All we're doing is just block it in color. Just block it in color. There we go, that easy. And this comes down like so. And we said there was going to be some more of it came out that way. Now, you know, there's it's just hundreds of different kinds of barns. So pick the kind of barn that you want. The principles are basically the same. Doesn't matter what kind of barn you're doing. The principles are pretty much the same. There we are. Now on this side, we need another little protrusion. See there? There we are. And this paint, I'm just pushing it right into the fabric. I need that dark color underneath. So we put some highlights on top of it. It'll show up. There. Okay, let's keep going down. There we are. And we've got a pretty good old barn shape going there already. Not bad. Let's have some fun. Now we can begin putting color into our barn. I'm going to take some bright red, use some dark sienna. I want to dull it down. It's too bright, too bright unless we dull it down. Maybe even put a little Van Dyke in there. There. I don't want this painting to be bright, but once again, if you want yours to be brighter, then all you have to do is make it that way. We just want to show you how to make it, then we're going to turn you loose on the world cut off our little roll of paint. Let's go right up here. Now then, let's put some, let's put some roof up here. And I'm just going to let that knife just bounce. It helps to make those little sounds. Maybe I'll make that a tiny bit brighter so you can see it a little better. Put a little white in it. I don't think it's showing up as well as it should. There we go. Now you can see. Just let it bounce right along there helps if you make them little sounds. There. Once again, I want this to be old, so these, the old shingles up here, boy, they've caught the devil. Some of them are gone. Some of them blowed away in the last storm. And the looks of it, the rest of them are gonna go in the next storm. There. Okay. Mm. A little bit over on this side. There we are. Shoot, oh, we got those shingles going. Let's put some out here. There you are. Okay. Well, I wish it was that easy to actually build a barn. My father was a carpenter, and I grew up building things. I worked in houses all over Florida. In fact, if you live in Florida, you very possibly could live in a house that my dad and I worked on. There. And he was a master carpenter. Oh, he could do some beautiful things. Beautiful things. Let's take a little dark sienna, some white, pull it out very flat, and cut across, get our little roll of paint again. Now then, let's put the icing on the cake here. Look at that. This is just like you're putting snow on the mountain. If you painted with me before and done mountains and you've mastered that, this is easy for you to do. Mm. And I want to make this look like old weathered wood. There. There we go. Beautiful. Mm. Delicate touch, does not take any pressure. The knife will literally, literally allow the paint just to come right off, just the right amount. A little dark right up here, because there'll be a shadow under that edge. A little bit of brown right under that edge. There. 
Now, take a little Van Dyke brown. I'll mix with that same color. I want to darken it. I want to make it darker than it was. Now, over here, it's going to be much darker on this side. Much, much darker. Just like so. Okay, let's put a door in here. Big door. It is right there. And that's all there is to it. Now we can take our knife and we can do a barnectomy. We can just cut it off wherever we think it should be. Take some straight Van Dyke Brown. You can just put the indication of boards here and there. There. Looks like a lot of old boards. Now then. Let's have some fun. We'll put some dark green grass all around his foot. Begin bringing that all together. Just using a two inch brush. And just begin laying in all kind of little grassy things. Just like so over here in that direction. I'm just using cad yellow. Little Indian yellow, little yellow ochre here and there, and work in layers. There. Okay, back to the other side. See how quick you can do that? A little touch of the bright red here and there, but not much, not too much, just enough to give it a little spark. I want this to remain very subdued in the foreground here. Don't want it to get too bright. There we go. Now we take some Van Dyke Brown on the knife. And maybe here and there you can see what remains. There used to be an old path here. And the grass is beginning to grow up over it. But here and there, a little of it remains. Just a little. A little bit of grass that comes right up over the path. Because it's about to eat this path up, what's left of it. See, it pays, when you're painting like this, make up little stories in your mind. Then there's a reason for all this happening, and it, oh, it makes it much more fun. Tell you what. Let's have a little fence. I'm going to take Van Dyke Brown, just use a small knife. Maybe there's a little fence still, part of it hanging out right about there. Just that little roll of paint on the knife. There it is. Just an old fence. Boy, that's a rough looking old fence. He's had a hard life. A little brown and white, touch the edges. Doop, doop. knife here and put the indication of a few rails that are still hanging on there they go <laughs> isn't that super you can make a fence that fast a little grass around the bottom cuts his little foots off and brings it together tell you what got just a couple of minutes left here you know me I like big trees Let's have a big tree. There's right there. Maybe he's got another arm. Comes right there. And this is straight Van Dyke Brown. There it is. I like his big trees because it pushes everything back. Just makes the painting look much deeper. Take a little brown and white. Come right down this side. Just put the indication of some light striking that trunk. Okay, need some leaves on our tree. So let's do that. Let's have some fun. I'll take some Van Dyke Brown. Maybe there's a happy little bridge here. And I tell you what, maybe it's behind these bushes and all you can see is the part that goes over the water. So let's have it come up. And then maybe like this. We'll put some character in it. And then it has a little bend in it. There. Let me get the small knife. The small knife will do a little better for that. I'm going to put some little posts on here. See, there's a little post. There's one. 
Look at that. Isn't that cute? There we go. That one goes over behind the bush. Then take the big knife. I we'll have to put a little rail up here. We don't, we don't want anybody to fall off this bridge and get wet. See there? I knew you could do that. A little brown and white, tiniest little bit of paint. Now I want to go along here and just show the indication of a little highlight here and there. Just to brighten him up, make him sing in the sunshine. Used to be a song about singing in the sunshine. Okay, back to my small knife. And I'll put a little indication here on these posts. Little knife gets right in there and does these little things. There. Yeah, maybe here and there the light really hits it. You could add a little, just a little sparkle of white. Just don't overdo. Just here and there. Maybe the light's zinging through there and hits right there too. Gives a little sparkle. Makes that, makes that little rascal jump out at you. All right. And rocks. You use some dark sienna here and a little bit of white. And maybe, maybe right along in here. We're beginning to see some, some nice rocky areas. Still want this to stay quite dark. Quiet dark. Just all kinds of things happening. I'll tell you what, let's do that up here. Now watch here, watch here. This is so much fun because now you can make a decision that there's a big cliff or a sheer drop off right here, a bank. That's the word I'm looking for. And you can just bring that around and leave this right in front. You can make all kinds of little things that go up in there, like so. Let's have some fun. Now, sometimes some of these stones get just full. I'll take some black, Van Dyke brown, at least a little touch of Prussian blue. I don't want much blue in this. I want mostly black, but a little brown and blue, just to change the flavor. Cut across. And we get a little roll of paint. Lives right out there on the edge of the knife. See him out there? Now, come right up in here. Let's have a, a nice mountain that lives right here. See? Now, I've had some people say that it's hard to make mountains. I'm going to show you the easiest way imaginable. All we do is just put in a basic shape. And you decide the shape of your mountain. You decide. If you don't live someplace there's mountains and you want to paint a mountain, there are books and and videotapes and all kind of stuff that show you all different shapes of mountains. Or just make one up. Just make it up. There. Be creative when you paint. Just let your imagination take you to worlds that exist only in your mind, but you can put them on canvas. There. I think I've mentioned some other series. That's probably what initially got me interested in painting is that I could create any kind of world that I wanted. Any kind of world that I wanted. No bad stuff here. That's why we have happy little trees and everything's happy here. Okay, now I'm just gonna sort of pull that down. Just grab it and sort of pull it down. Just like we would normally do to make a mountain. But see, it's getting lighter down at the base. And over here, we'll just go in this direction. And all we're doing is just, just pulling the color out so the next thing sticks easier. There, get rid of that excess paint more than anything else. All right. Now let's take a little touch of the, oh, we take some titanium white, at least a little touch of dark sienna. Maybe just a touch more than that. Ooh, that's nice. That's nice. A little roll of paint once again, but a very small roll of paint. Now then, go up in here and just barely touch, barely touch, and just let it sort of float down the mountain. See there? Okay, see how easy that is? Now if you do it fast, it works better than just barely doing it. For some reason it works better, but no pressure. You want this paint to break, and by break, I mean have all these little holes here in it. See there? And maybe a little touch right in here. Got to make those little noises. And sometimes those little noises really do help. For some reason, 
I just sort of make things work better. There. All right. We'll just use that same old brush. Shoot, we don't care. Take a little bit of the cad yellow, yellow ochre. Be right back. Get a little touch of black. A little bit of sap green. There we go. But mix these colors on the brush so you have a multitude of things happening on the brush. A little Indian yellow here and there. And here and there, I'm going to touch the least little touch of the bright red. All on one brush, though. Look at all the colors that are in that one brush. And we're touching and pushing. Okay, let's go up here. Now then, I want to make little grassy areas that flow right up the hill. So all we do is touch and tap. Follow the angles. Always follow those angles. There. See them? But isn't that simple? All you're doing is just tapping. The most important thing is the angles here. You don't want your mountain to flow up this way and you put grasses going in a different direction. It will disturb you. I bet you've looked at paintings and your mind says, something's wrong with that painting. You might not, might not be able to tell exactly what it is, but you know something's wrong with it. And sometimes it can be something as simple as that. So these little, little things that we talk about all the time, like lay of the land and following the correct angles, are most important, most important. They'll make your painting special, very special. Watch here. See, that one sort of went on over. So all you have to do, we'll take a little touch of black, put it right there. See, just give it something to stand on. Don't let it just lay out there by itself. There, and very lightly. Pull that down. And I want it to remain a little darker so it looks like it's closer in the foreground. There, very lightly. Just let it blend right into nothing. And you can do that with just a knife, that easy. At least a little bit of color on the knife. And you can put the indication here and there of little things that are happening. But that's just a little black on there. Just to see how it makes it look like there's little things happening back here. And every time you have a little projection here, you need a little shadow underneath it or it won't play with you. Just, it'll just go home and leave you. There we are. There. See, and then with a clean brush, you can very gently just blend that up a little bit. But isn't that a neat way of making a mountain that really looks like it's far away? Now we go back to brush that has the grassy colors on it and we can begin just putting in all kinds of little things and once in a while you can hit a least little touch of titanium white and just put a little bright spot here and there but don't overdo or it will lose its effectiveness like there's a little light hitting right there bing there it comes it's going right over there it is see what we'll just I tell you what let that go right on out there once in a while, you can hit a little sap green just to give it a little dark areas here and there so it's not all the same identical color. There we go. There. Okay. But isn't that a fantastic and very easy way of making a gorgeous little mountain? Ooh, I, ooh. Sometimes I get carried away. I see something here. Let's do, let's take some black, Prussian blue, a little crimson and sap green. We'll just mix all those together. Okay, let me wipe my knife off. We just wipe the old knife on a paper towel. Yeah. I use number three fan brush, and I'm gonna put some of that dark color on there, both sides, load it full. And maybe right up in here, lives, live, yep, maybe there's a little, little stand of evergreens that lives right in here. I think that's what you call a, a whole group. I know it's not a herd of evergreen, so I think it's a stand of evergreen. A whole family, what the heck. A bunch. There. Now, back to our brush we were making the little grass areas with. Put a little grass right there in front. And see that dark color will make an instant shadow underneath it. You don't even have to worry about it. There we go. Now then, let's get crazy. <laughs> you know me. You know me. I like to play. Let's see, we had black, a little Van Dyke, a little Prussian. Mix that same color again. Once again, our little roll of paint. There it is. 
maybe over here on this side. Yep. I must have another one that lives right here. Another big old mountain. It comes down right there. It certainly does now. Maybe, I don't know, maybe this one's got a little bump right here too. And then comes right on out like that somewhere. There we go. But mostly black. I'm using a very dark color here. Mostly black. Alright. Now, grab that and once again, just pull it out. Just like we did the other one. This is just a repeat of the other side. We'll do it twice and that'll give you a lot of practice. A lot of practice. There. Okay. And once again, we take a little white with a little touch of dark sienna in it. Maybe the least little touch of black into that one, just so it has some variations. We come right up here, barely touch, whisper, just whisper light. Let it go, let it go, no pressure. I think I've mentioned before when I was teaching my son Steve to paint, I used to tell him just to pretend he was a whisper and floated right across the mountain. And he understood that, it made him understand what a gentle touch this is. A lot of times I just, I absolutely drop the knife because I'm holding it so gently. All right. 